Well, I think ESB, its roots go way back to 1971 when it was first launched. And Fuller's at that time uh, were making London Pride and Bitter. And they decided to call it Extra Special Bitter. Then later on, we started to export this ESB to the United States. And the American brewers were then just forming the sort of craft beer movement. And they, they drank this ESP, and all of a sudden, they thought, this is a great beer, let's make our own versions of this. And this is what exactly what they did. Red Hook were the first, I think, to make it their own ESP. And they genuinely thought ESP was a style. And because of that, and what the American craft beer brewers did with that beer, it elevated it from just being a Fuller's beer to being a worldwide style. And ESB and Fuller's was always linked then from 71 onwards. ESB was the beer of Fuller's. ESB has won more prizes for Fuller's than any of our other beers. London Pride is our biggest seller, but ESB wins the prizes. I remember reading a report in the Sunday Mirror that ESB was the strongest beer on draft in Britain. And there were so many people, when I joined Fuller's later on in 1981, there were so many people who came to me to tell me stories of their first encounter with ESB because it was so strong. And it, still to this day, when I go to the United States, I, I've recently back from Seattle, they wanted to talk about Fuller's ESB. When I was doing a tasting there of all our beers, it was ESB they remembered the most. And, and we've just done a, a collaboration brew with um, Kozel in the Czech Republic, and they contacted us because they wanted to brew a Fuller's ESB in the Czech yeah. Republic. So well, it's the, if people want to do a collaboration with us, that's the beer they want to do with Fuller's. I have been asked so many times to make an ESB, advise on making an ESB and I say that it's not a proper ESB unless I've gone and blessed the fermentation vessels <laughs> and I get paid to do that. There's so many American brewers, I mean Garrett Oliver writes about Fuller's in his book and if you, if you, if you buy the Brewmaster's Table by Garrett Oliver he, he's talked about Fuller's and there's so many pictures of Fuller's Brewery in his book. The other person, of course, that I have great interest in is John Hall from uh, Goose Island. Uh, he's now retired, he's the founder of Goose Island. And for his retirement beer, he wanted to make ESB because ESB was the beer that inspired him when he landed at Heathrow Airport and was working in London. He used to drink in our pubs and drink ESB. So he said, the last beer I want to make as the owner of Goose Island is an ESB. And he asked me to come across and make a beer with him. So the founder fathers, Ken Grossman at Sierra Nevada, inspired by beers like ESB, London Pride, etc. But British Brewing has such a tremendous influence on craft beer movement. ESB in particular, because it was the first experience a lot of American brewers got of British beer. But if you look at IPA, which is the beer that launched craft beer around the world, and it's still the most massive beer in craft beer, that is a British beer. I think for ESB on the bar today, I, I think firstly, it is a way of reminding craft that this is the original beer that launched craft. And I think of that, it's, it's got a lot of kudos for there. It is the beer that inspired those great American breweries, which again, have inspired the British craft brewery. So the original beer that launched this was ESB. But I also think that people need to uh, taste what family brewers can do and, and how it's come from brewers like Fuller's on the bar in, so they can compare it with what the craft beer is doing now. I think it's a good to have a baseline and ESB is the baseline for craft. Well, I'm hoping it'll be even more popular because I think what will happen is people will go back to this beer. 
one, one of the things it has that I think sometimes craft beer struggles with is it has tremendous drinkability. People can drink three, four pints of this and think they've only had two. <laughs> Until they leave the pub. <laughs> Until they leave the pub. So ESB has the same ingredients as London Pride. It is brewed. We have a party guile system where we, we brew ESB alongside London Pride. So, it's a, so London Pride and ESB are sort of basically horses out of the same stable. Um, we have the same English hops, we have the same English malted barley. Uh, so you're using Target, Challenger, North Down, Goldings. We put a few Goldings, extra Goldings in Fermenter to just sort of lift the, the Goldings and the hop notes up a little bit. Uh, and it stays for an extra week in condition, uh, maturation tank before it gets sent off to cast racking. What I like about ESB, I mean, London Pride is a very well-balanced beer, but ESB is well-balanced as well. But its balance is toward, more towards that hoppy note, which, mm. which we exaggerate by dry hopping it in fermenting and yeah. in maturation vessel. But because it's brewed at a higher gravity than London Pride, I think the fruitiness from the yeast comes through more. And yeah. I think truly this is where that first legendary flavour that Fuller's are associated with, the orange flavour, yeah. comes. That's the first time you notice it. I don't think you notice it so much in London Pride, but you notice it more in ESB. I mean, yeah, I would say if, if some, anybody says to me, what does Fuller's yeast bring to a beer? I would always say, go and taste ESB and that will tell you it. Yeah. And of course, that is what makes ESB so legendary. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.